Okay, we're looking now at finding the rule for an exponential sequence. The difference between a normal polynomial and an exponential sequence is, of course, that the the variable x is in the power now, not in the base. So here we have the variable up high. So this is the sequence that I'm going to try and fit an exponential curve to. Uh, negative 2, 28, negative 1, 22, 628. Um, these negatives are going to cause a bit of a problem. So to begin with, I'm only going to fit to the, to the positive values. Um, X can be 0, 1, 2. They've got a whole bunch of ordered pairs. And also for the purposes of this video and the amount of algebra required, I'm only going to fit the first three so I'm not going to include this last pair. Right, I'll just plot them so you can see what they look like on a graph. There we go. So there's our first three points. Let's just have a look at what an exponential function looks like. So here's 2 to the power of x. And here's 3 to the power of x. And if I just put in a, a coefficient b as the base, so you can see how changing b changes the steepness of the graph. Um, I'll add another coefficient in, this one we'll call a, and that's going to go before b, so this is multiplied by all of b to the power of x, and that also changes the steepness of the graph. But if you look at how a changes compared to b, you see anything to the power of 0 is 1, so changing b won't change the pivot point at 1 on the y-axis, but changing a will. I'll also add in a, a variable c that can be inside the power. So it's going to be a times b to the power of x plus c. Now if I make c equal to 1, for instance, all that does is change the power from 0 to 1 or 1 to 2 or 2 to 3. It really doesn't change anything about this equation. So the variable c is kind of pointless. So we won't bother with that one. We'll get rid of c. And the last one is going to be d. Now d just shifts the whole thing up, it just adds a constant on the end. So I can use those three variables to fit in for the first three points. Now we've got three variables here, so that means we'll have three equations, and those three equations will be made out of these first three points. Uh, it can be done to do more than that, and we can look at that at the very end, but for now we're going to have these three equations. When y is equal to 2, x is equal to 0. So I'll just plug y and x in. Do the same here. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to 28. And when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 122. So these are my three equations, and a, b, and d are my three variables that I'm going to solve for. b to the power of 0 is 1. So I can rearrange equation 1 so that d is equal to 2 minus a. I'll take this result, and if I substitute it into equation 2, then 28 equals a times b plus, and because d is equal to 2 minus a, we'll swap that in. So a bit of simplification here. 26 equals a times b b minus 1, if I factorize the right hand side, and now I'll rearrange and get b equals 26 over a plus 1. So I've now got an equation for b in terms of a, and if I substitute this, and d equals 2 minus a into equation 3, I'm going to get a times b squared and b is equal to 26 over a plus 1 plus d but d is equal to 2 minus a we've now got one equation with one variable a that we need to solve for so I'll expand this squared bracket just using foil Okay, and now I'll I'll multiply this a through. Okay, 
and this minus A and A will cancel off. A little bit more simplification. I can add the 52 and the 2. And if I simplify a little bit further, so 68 will equal 676 over A. If I move the A over to the left hand side and then the 68 over to the right, do you have a fraction which is the value of A? Now I could write that as a decimal, but I'll lose some of the accuracy, so I'll leave it as a fraction. Alright, now equation 1 says that 2 equals A plus D, and we know what A is, so if I substitute that in, 2 equals 676 over 68 plus D. So if I rearrange this, then I've got a value for D as well. I could probably simplify this, but I won't now, I'll just leave it as that value. Right, so now we've got a value for A and D. All that's left is to work out what B is. So I'll use equation 2. A times B plus D equals 28. So 28 equals 676 over 68, which is A, times B plus 2 minus 676 over 68 and that's the value of D. I'll subtract 2 from both sides and I'll factorize the right hand side to get B inside the bracket. Uh, I'll divide both sides by seven, uh, 676 over 68 and I'll add 1 on and that's what B is equal to. So B and that simplifies down to uh, 47 over 13. So there's our three values of A, B and D on the right hand side and all that's left at this stage is to write our equation Y equals A times B to the power of X plus D and that's our equation there. Alright so we'll just plug this into our graphing program to have a look see if it fits okay. Right, and there we go, it appears to sit through all three points quite well. And if we if we have a little zoom in it should should fit okay. Now if I just zoom out, I'm gonna plot the fourth point, which was x equal to three, y is equal to six hundred and twenty eight. And as you can see that doesn't quite fit. Now the reason for this is we've only fit it for the first three points because we only used three uh, three variables in our equation. We had A multiplied out the front. Now we could do it for the f for the fourth point. What it requires is re replacing the coefficient of B, which was A, which was a constant, by a new a new thing which was AX plus, we'll say H. Uh, this is because this is a first order polynomial as opposed to just a constant. So we've introduced another variable and doing this would allow you to fit it to the fourth point. Now another problem we had was, well, our points we were trying to fit were 2, 28, and 122. And then we're using the equation A times B to the power of X plus D. And, and that worked, but don't forget what we really wanted was negative 2, positive 28, negative 122. And to do that we need some way of making the equation go negative, positive, negative. And what we're going to do is add in this little negative 1 to the power of X term in here. The reason we're doing this and we're going to multiply it right in there, it's going to be right next to the b and we're going to put the whole thing to the power of x. That's because negative 1 to the power of x, if x is 0, that's negative 1 to the power of 0 which is 1, negative 1 to the power of 1 which is negative 1, then 1 again, then negative 1 and so on. So that makes our equation go positive, negative, positive, negative. Uh, that's our oscillating term. But what we want was negative positive first. So to do that, all we have to do is up these numbers by one each. So I'll make that x uh, to the power of x plus one. So if I chuck that into our equation, right in there with the b, so it's going to be negative one to the power of x plus one times b, all of that to the power of x plus d, then I'll chuck this, that, that'll work now. I'll chuck it into the graphing program so I can point out one more thing.
right? So I'll plot that new function with the oscillating term in there, and I'll hide everything else, and you can see there's no graph appeared. Now the reason for that is uh, it only works if x is equal equal to one, two, three, etc. X has to be an integer. If it's not equal to a whole number, then it's not going to work. Uh, it does work for those values, and that's what we want. So it does fit the sequence, but it's no longer going to give you a, a, a function because a negative number to the power of a decimal is going to give you a complex number, not a real number. So it's not going to show up on our graph there. Uh, but it can be done, and it does fit the sequence negative 2, 28, negative 1, 22.